Good morning, church. Today I have the privilege to, to be able to share the word today. We will be, I'm going to be talking about that Psalm 23. Psalm 23, that's one of my uh, favorite scriptures in the Bible. It ministry to me in, in a lot of special ways. And so this, when I was um, giving the, me the opportunity to, to share this um, psalm, well, first I choose another psalm, but there was already somebody else was going to speak about. But and then I decided to say, well, Psalm 23 it should be the easiest one to, to share. And, and um, so I, that's what I thought. But as I start um, reading about it, um, I really see and learn a lot of things that I, that in other ways I haven't seen it. And because uh, Psalm 23 is one of those, um, is, is the psalm that most of the people know about it, heard about it, or somebody told them about it. Christian people, people who follow any other religions, uh, including people who who doesn't follow any, any religion groups or any churches, uh, they have heard about the Psalm 23. Even people who, who in some way decide to deny God, they don't believe in God, or they decide not to believe in God, they, they heard or they know about the Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is, um, is one of the... Um, words that, um, parts of the Bible that, that as, as, uh, Bible scholars, scholars and theologians have been willing to even say, some of them have even willing to say, that in the Psalm 23, the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is packed in that Psalm. I mean, that's, that's how some uh, uh, Bible scholars and Theologians, they have been willing to say that. And, and uh, when I um, started looking into it, I really, in a way, I thought, in a way, I think it might be the, the whole Bible and these two six chapters of Psalm 23. So this is um, the psalm that I choose to talk about. And... Um, as we all uh, know that Psalm 23 was written by King David. King David was the one that uh, almost everybody ag agrees that he's the one that, that God gave him that, um, that psalm for him to write it. But Psalm 23, it, it says that it began on David's mind Kind of little time, long time ago, long time before, before he even wrote it. And um, as we know, David was a was a shepherd, was a shepherd, a guy who who will be or live in the fields, uh, taking care of the sheep, taking care of the lambs of his dead. David was um, a man that. Um, the, the, from early in time, he, all, early in his life, he, he knew that he was blessed by the Lord. That David knew that, that God had his hand on him. Because as he was uh, taking care of the, uh, the sheep, uh, he, uh, he was uh, one of those guys, that very courageous guy, that he was willing to do whatever it takes to protect his sheep. And uh, the, the Bible uh, tells us the stories about that he even um, fight with bears, that he went after lions and, and a lot of other, uh, predators that, that, they, that they came to try to get his sheep. David was... Um, Early in life, he also he was a, a 
Well, he knew that the Lord had his hands on him, but then at the age, we think that we believe that around the age of 15, could it be earlier, could it be a little after 15 years old, uh, he was anointed to be the king of Israel. And, and he was, and then he had a way a little, little, little while, a few years later, he became, to the, he became to be the king of Israel. And during the time of that, um, during the time of his, where he was a king, king uh, he, uh, he had a really good success directing the, the people of Israel. But uh, we, as we know, uh, King David also made a big mistake in town, so we're not going to talk about them. But uh, we know that David has had uh, sons, but uh, at that time, uh, he, in some time, one of the sons, his, uh, his name was Absalom, he uh, somehow, in some family problems they developed in that family, uh, Absalom came against David and uh, in a way that, that, that Absalom came with all he had to, to kill David, to kill his own father. Absalom was, uh, the, the, the story in the Bible says that the Absalom was one of those guys that, uh, that was very handsome, handsome man that he, um, that was known by his long hair, um, but uh, the, doing all, uh, all he was able to do to come against his father for something that had happened in that family, um, he was able to, to put all, a lot of people against David and um, to a point that uh, David had it had to get off, basically get off the throne and get off the city and run out to the wilderness to protect his life or to, we believe that he ran away because he didn't, um, he, he was afraid in a way to, to, conf, to be confronted by his son, but at the same time he was afraid that he was, he was going to have to be put on a situation where he would have had to kill his own, son, his own son, and he was trying to avoid that, so he ran out um, him, and um, as we all kind of get that, uh, we can all imagine when you, when we have uh, our own son coming up against us, or we have somebody that come against us, that how we feel, and the way that I look at it is that, um, is that I can just imagine the frustration, the fear that King David uh, was feeling, knowing, you know, like he had it to get off the throne. He had to get out the palace. He had to get out the city. He had to leave everything that he had behind to go out in the wilderness to hide and, and be safe, in other words, to, not to confront his son. So what I think, what, I, what we believe that is that David was, uh, in some point, he was very discouraged. He was um, very sad for the whole situation and, 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 and thinking, you know, like, Remember that, remember that David knew that God had his hands on him. But he, all this frustration and all this situation that had come on to him at that time, um, for four years, we believe it was for four years that he, uh, his son came with everything he had against him. So all that time he was being put to a position where, where King David, in a way, he forgot that God was with him. David was to a point where, like, sometimes uh, with his, the whole uh, frustration that he had and all the problems that he had, it overwhelmed his mind, his heart, to a point that he said, 
he didn't even think that God was with him anymore. He was uh, depressed, for saying he was depressed by trying to, um, for being in this situation. And um, uh, some of the commentaries were saying that, uh, that at that, it was one night when, um, when David was in the wilderness hiding, sad, probably crying. Uh, it said that it, it kind of deep in the wilderness, kind of a little further in the wilderness, he, he heard a shepherd directing his sheep. His sheep. He couldn't see it. But it's the moment when the Holy Spirit came into him and, and I start, you know, the Holy Spirit is speaking up to, to David, reminding him all the things that he did, all the things that David did to protect his sheep. The Holy Spirit reminds him how he embraced him and how he direct him to direct his sheep, his sheep uh, to the places where they were, so they will be fed, they will be able to drink, they will be able to, to rest. The Holy Spirit reminds him that, that God was with him. In other words, it's like we believe the Holy Spirit spoke to David and says, David, what are you doing? What are you doing? I am right here with you. I have never let you down. And that's when we believe that David came up to a point where he was a shepherd, but at that moment, he became a lamb. He became a chief because he had to surrender himself and, and look at God as he was his shepherd. That's what we believe that, that David came up with a, with a big expression where, where, um, where he comes on the verse one, where he says, God is my shepherd, and I will not need anything else. God is my shepherd. And that's, that's, the, uh, that's what the moment that we believe that they, uh, they originate this song. Maybe he write it later on in life, but uh, we believe that that song came to his mind on that situation that he was uh, having with, uh, with his own son. But God reminded him that, that, that he was with him and that he never had left him alone. But uh, the circumstances turning in, into a for him to feel like he was uh, left behind, you know, left alone. So God, um, the, the word of God, it says on the psalm, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He let me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renew my strength. He guides me along right path, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. You rod, you rod and your stuff protect me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely, your goodness and unfailing love and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, it says, Jehová is mi pastor, nada me faltará. En lugares de delicados pastos me hará descansar. Junto a aguas de reposo me pastoreará. Confortará mi alma, me guiará por sendas de justicia, por amor de su nombre. Aunque ande en valle de sombra de muerte, no temeré mal alguno, porque tú estarás conmigo. Tu vara y tu callado me infundirán aliento. 
Aderezas mesa delante de mí en presencia de mis angustiadores. Unges mi cabeza con aceite, mi copa está rebosando. Ciertamente el bien y la misericordia me seguirán todos los días de mi vida y en la casa de Jehová moraré por largos días. Glory to the Lord. Psalm 23 is, it has ministered to a lot of people and me has ministered to me in a, way, in a special ways because remind me that, that he is the shepherd. Reminds me that, that he has taken care of me in a ways that I, can never, that I can never count how many times that he has taken care of me including in the times when I wasn't a Christian, including in the times when I didn't even want to have anything to do with God, when I didn't want to serve God, when I didn't want to hear about it, he was right there. Yeah. I remember the times where, um, where, um, when I used to live as a little boy in, a, in a big city, one of the biggest cities in Mexico on the street. Because that uh, that's, was part of my... My growing, my growing, I grew part of my time in, in, on the streets, on a, one of the biggest cities in Mexico. And, and even back then, I do believe that God's provision, pro, he was providing me with everything that I need. So God is good at, like, David, going back to David, David um, had to come to a point where, where his expression wasn't, wasn't like saying, God is the shepherd. His expression can change in a way that instead of saying, God is the shepherd, he personalized it and say, God is my shepherd. Amen. And And that's what, uh, that's what it makes a lot of difference when we, when we say, God is my shepherd. That um, if we see in, in John 10, John 10, 11, uh, 10, 11 says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And it talks more about it, and as we see that um, Jesus himself, he introduced himself as, as the good shepherd, the good shepherd who will lay down his life for his sheep. As we know, Jesus came to die to rescue us, to give us life, to give us another opportunity, to give us the, the privilege to be able to, to spend eternity with him. Jesus came to, to get us together. Jesus came and gave us, and, and was, in other words, God was the, the provider. In other words, God provided ways for us to be able to reconcile with, with God, for give us the opportunity to, to accept him as our Savior and Lord and be directed by him. He, was, he is the provision. Because even on that time, I like go back to my childhood, God provided for me in, in a way that I didn't, I didn't I always have something to eat. I always have people, they offer me help. Yeah, and in my testimony, I said that some people, yeah, some people did not want to help me. But a lot of people did help me. A lot of people... Uh, didn't, um, didn't let me go hungry. And that's, that I, I do thank God for those moments because I was 11 years old and a lot of things could have happened to me and God provided me with protection, with guidance. He protected me uh, for a lot of things. And uh, so God is being so good. And that's why now I can really clear, clear and with a strong conviction I can say that God, Jesus, is my good shepherd, the good shepherd who provides for me. 
In John 6, 6.35, he, identif- he also identifies that he is the, um, the bread of la- the bread and the, and the water, the one that uh, uh, Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. God gave us his word. He provides his word to be able to, so we can be fed, and we can get to know that shepherd, the shepherd who will provide for everything that my soul be satisfied with. Yeah. My soul be fulfilled with his word, because his word brings me encouragement. His, his words bring, bring me a knowledge of I got somebody who loves me. The words bring me a, a waste that, that, I don't even, that I don't even want, I don't crave, I don't crave other things to bring happiness to me. Because happiness, God brings and provides me the happiness, but let me, through the word, remind me that I've been loved. That God loves me. That God accept me as who, as who I am because He created me. He made me. He, he got me on His hands, and that brings satisfaction to my soul, to my life, to my heart. And and that's just the way that um, God provides. Jesus also said, that, uh, "Is my good." He gives me a good direction. As I grew up, and then I come up here to uh, the States, Jesus gives me, the good shepherd gives me direction. When I was lost in the world, when I was lost in the world, God provided for me, for for direction. As I was uh, in a place, as I, saw, as I said on my testimony some time ago, Jesus used a man to give me a Bible, to give me a little Bible. And like I said that time, I read it because I didn't have nothing else to read. I didn't have nothing else to do, so I read it. And find out that God has given me that direction to come to him, the direction to come to the Lord. As John 14, 6, it says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and, li- and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Right. So uh, when I knew that, it's like, Jesus, the good shepherd, gives me direction. He directs me to the Father he directs my steps to follow him, to go and do what he called me, what he created me to do. He created me to praise God. He created me to worship God. He created me to serve God. But his word tells me that that direction, that I needed to walk in that direction, that I needed to walk in that direction that he created for me to walk on. It's like... He gave us that direction. In John 14, in John 14, uh, chapter, chapter 14, verse 15 and 17 through 17, it says, "If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to help you." and be with you forever. When we read the scripture there, uh, we, we just know that, that God provides and he gives us direction. When, when he was talking to the disciples there, he was, he was uh, the scripture said that they, everybody was sad because he was, he, ready to, he was telling them he was going to leave them and they thought that they were going to be left, left uh, alone, orphans and but Jesus uh, assured them, Jesus assured me and assured you that he will never let us alone. 
He said, I will go up to the Father, and me and him, we will send another advocate. Another just like him. Another one that will be with you. Another one that will help you. Another one that will intercede for you. Another one that will never let you down. Another one that will embrace you when you need to be embraced. Another one that will that will put you when you need to be pushed to do what you be called to do. Another one that they assure you and, and tell you, hey, I'm with you and I will never let you down because you are the precious creation that I ever created. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who is, comes to dwell in your heart when you receive that shepherd as your shepherd, he implants the Holy Spirit in you to direct you and to encourage you and let you know that you're not alone, that he will help you to do everything he called you to do, and he will help you to become everything you were called to become, a follower of him, a worshiper of him, a person who will praise, you, praise him and worship him. He will help you to do that. That's what it says, the advocate, the paracletos. In other words, that he will be with you always because he is a good shepherd. He is the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd, the one that we all, are put, that we all put the trust in. He is the good shepherd. And the Holy Spirit will help us to, to continue our works, our works in this world Focus and, and to him. Hebrews 12, 12, 12, 2, it says, Hebrews 12, 12, 2 says, fixing our, uh, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfect of faith. In other words, our, our walk is, in times, it gets a little rough, just like David did. David had a, a rough time. But in the moment that he thought that he was left alone, the Spirit of the Lord opened his eyes and saw that shepherd. And saw that shepherd. And this is what we, what we do. We focus on Jesus. Our eyes, our spiritual eyes, focus on Jesus. As we walk in faith, keep our eyes on Jesus. Because Jesus, as when we keep our eyes on Jesus, when we keep our eyes on God, when we keep our eyes on that good shepherd, he protects us. He is the good, the good shepherd give us protection. And John 10, 26, 28, 30 says... But you don't believe because you are, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and that you'll never perish. The word is, is that I know them. In other words, he knows you. He knows me. And when your eyes and your soul, your whole self, your faith is on that shepherd, that shepherd says, No one will never snatch you of my hands. Because he gives you the protection that you need. The protection that you, you don't need any other hands to protect you. God himself protects you. I believe that uh, even on those moments when I was a child lost in that big city, even back then, I believe that he protect me. 
his mercies, his grace goes way, way back then. Even in my rebellion attitude, and my attitude that I'm not proud of it, God was protecting me. In Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, angels or demons, neither the present, nor the future, not any power, neither height, not depth, not anything else in the creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The good shepherd, our Lord, he gives us the protection. As we, walk, as we walk in faith, as we walk in for saying as we walk in the valley, because valley is, is described or is, is illustrated as, as a place in the bottom or in between mountains surround you, surrounded. And that's what David says on the, the, uh, even if I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid because I know you with me. And if we believe uh, that uh, the good shepherd is, is protecting us, we live in this, I would say, in this angry world mm-hmm. where, we, where we as Christians, we battle every single moment. Everywhere we go, Everywhere, except church, everywhere we go, <laughs> yeah, everywhere we go, it's a battle. I mean, you just, you just plan about going out to, to for saying a good restaurant to have a good meal, and and you will start hearing the people next to you talking all kind of this, you know, nasty words and and. Blaspheming the, the, the name of the Lord in ways. You go to the grocery store or any place at work, and all that comes. You know, you're hearing this and that, and, and talking down on religion, talking down on, 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 on followers of Christ, and trying to diminish every single thing the Christian people, we, all the Christian people we do. All that are coming to our, to, our, to our ears, to our brain. But as, as we say, the Holy Spirit it has anointed us with his presence and his protection. The shepherds, like David, at the time, that used, the, the, the story says that, that the shepherds used to um, get, get the sheep and they used to bring... I sent olive oil, and they put it on. They put it on on the on the heads, the ears of the of the lambs or the sheep. They get oil and they put it on on their heads. And the reason that they were doing that, they, they used to do that, and then still some and still some places in 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 the world that still, the shepherd still uses that technique to protect the sheep from the flies. The flies will come on their heads or on the whole bodies and they will implant um, parasites, germs that is growing in their ears if, they're not, if they don't have their oil. So that the flies put the parasites, the parasites start going into their brain right. and, and once they get that in their brains, they they just go crazy because inside there is just the torment that they go through it. And that's what, that's what we believe that, that David was saying, you anoint my head with oil because the Holy Spirit, as we are the followers of that shepherd, 
The shepherd had, has anointed us with the oil. He has anointed us with the Holy Spirit in our heads, in our brains, in our ears. So everything that flies around us, all the dirty noises that we hear, it doesn't penetrate into our soul because the Holy Spirit is protecting us and keep us thinking on the Good Shepherd, good. that He is the protector. And so this, um, as, as we are followers, we always, we recommend, we encourage for you to maintain your eyes in Jesus, for you to maintain your eyes, your ears on the Word of God who is going to protect you, who is going to guard your soul from all the dirtiness or nastiness that we live, that we live in, you know, that, that everything that is around us that is, can derail us to on a different path that God don't want you to go to it. So Jesus is, is our good shepherd. Psalm 91, 19, it says, so when you do that, you protect them. The Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling. Again, no harm will overtake you, not disaster will come near your tent. When you protect, when you bring the shepherd to be your shepherd, he anointed you with that oil, that your oil overflows. Just like the scripture talks about Aaron, that it drips down and protects everything around you, your family, your home, your business, everything you own is protected by that Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is help you, not just to you, to your sons, to your daughters, to your grandsons, to your grandchildren, to your grand-grandchildren. That's a blessing that it will overflow and bless yes. your descendants, your, yeah, your, your new generations. God is so good. The good shepherd give us hope. When we are in the, in the bodies or when we are in this world, Jesus, my good shepherd, will give me hope. Because his word, like in um, on Joshua 1, 1 through 9, it's a long scripture. You can read it when you get a chance or when you get home. Read it and you will see all the big promises that, that God gave Joshua, that the Holy Spirit given us today and has given us for us to, to absorb those blessings. But it's putting, it's putting a word there that what it says, just keep walking straight with your eyes in Jesus, with your eyes in that good shepherd. Keep you, don't go to the left or to the right, it says, and if, you, and, and if you do that, whatever you step, whatever you put your foot on, whatever you step on, he will prosper you. He will prosper you. And he says, but he says, but be courageous. Don't be afraid. And knowing that I'm with you. And repeat a couple of times in that, in that period that scripture says, be courageous. Don't be afraid. Because I'm with you that I will never let you down. Yeah. In John 14, 6, 7, and 14, 16, and 17, it, it, it repeats, I repeat that, it's the scripture, because it's, for me, it's very, it, it ministered to me in ways that Jesus, the good shepherd, is telling us that he will give us that Holy Spirit. Yes. And we have received the Holy Spirit. The, the guide us and direct us. In times we go to, uh, in Romans 8, 28, this talks about sometimes we're going through a hard times. Like, like me, maybe you have been in a, in, in a more difficult times, but you're still here. God has protected you and direct you in ways that, that you're still here. And that's like me, I went through, through that situation and, and a lot of other ones. A lot of other situations where I, where I failed in times, 
that like, like David failed at that moment where he thought that God has left him. A lot of times we, as, as me, I, after I became a Christian, and I have gone to a moment where I really felt like, where is God? But he reminds me and, and has my difficult situations or my difficult experiences that I have, I can, I can clearly say that God has protected me. That, has, that God has provided me with everything that I need. That God has given me the directions that I need, the courage to, to keep on walking on that direction that He created for me. The God has the God, the Good Shepherd, has 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 always will continue to give me hope. The hope that I that I that don't matter what the hard times that I will confront, that I will experience in this world. I know that when my time ends, or when the time ends, if I'm still alive, when time comes, that Jesus come. He will come and pick me up. I will come and everything will go away. All the worries, all the pains, all the sufferings will go. Because the word says in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, it says, after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together. No, he will pick us up and we will meet with him if we're still alive. And if we're not, we will go before the ones that are alive. And we all meet together to be right with him as so the good shepherd, the good shepherd, Jesus, the good shepherd, will give us the assurance. Will give us the assurance that, that don't matter what, the good shepherd will never let you down. As I, as my experience and my walk in, in faith, and like I said before, even become a Christian, God was with me. God has protected me. And until today, God has never let me down. And I have convictions that I know that His Word says that He will never let me down. So we can clearly be saying like, like David said it on on Psalm 23, 1, and we can personalize the scripture when David saw the Lord as the shepherd, because he personalized it as we have personalized it, and see Jesus as my shepherd. As says, Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. I like that. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. So when you become the lamb, when you become, or when you express those words to the Lord and say, the Lord is my shepherd, he becomes your shepherd shepherd that will protect you and, 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 and seal you with his spirit so you can go through it to the point where he wants you to go to where you will never get lost you will have your way to get to, the, to heaven to the Lord as he said the Lord is my shepherd 
maybe in um, maybe someone here that they haven't had that they have that courage or the opportunity to to let your heart speak out and says to this moment I want I want that shepherd to be my shepherd Will you stand up for me, please? The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. So if you hear or someone online that it has never received the Lord as your personal savior, you got this opportunity today to just do just to say a few words and just to say just like this I repent of my sin and I come to you Lord to ask you to forgive me for all my sins I invite you or I want you for you to be the chapter of my life Come and dwell in, in my heart and make me one of you cheap. Give me that privilege to become one of you cheap. Give me that courage to, to say, Jesus, I want you to be my shepherd my chapter in Jesus name bless you amen you know when he told us gave us his testimony several months ago it's hard for me to believe he was a little 11-year-old kid living on the street in Mexico, but God had a plan for that 11-year-old kid. God had a plan for him, and God's plan is still unfolding in his life as it is in your life. So as he prayed that prayer, I want to invite you again, if you've never invited Christ to be the Lord of your life and you want to do that today, I think that prayer is so important. Could we just pray it together? Would you just, if that's you and you want to receive Christ, raise your hand, but let's pray that simple prayer again and then we want to bless you as you leave father in jesus name i just confess to you pray with me i confess that i've sinned against you and i ask you to forgive me lord come into my heart become the lord of my life the shepherd of my life and help me to follow you all the days of my life in jesus name Amen. Amen. If you prayed that, whether you prayed it out loud, prayed it on your heart, prayed it online, listen, please let us know. Let us help you. We have a plan to help you take your next steps in Christ, and we'd love to do that. Would you lift your hands? I want to speak God's blessing over you. Would you help me, Pastor Julio, bless these folks? You can do it in Spanish okay. if you want to. Yeah? Okay. I'm going to do it in English. You do it in Spanish. Okay. Or you want me to do it in Spanish, and you do it in English. Okay. Yeah. Seven, seven people sent me a note that said, is he speaking in tongues? What do we do? What do we do? That's, Let's do it, brother. May the Lord bless you. That the Lord, que el Señor les bendiga. <laughs> May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Y que el Señor te mantenga. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Y que su rostro resplandezca en ti. May the Lord be gracious unto you. Que el Señor derrame de su gracia sobre ti. And give you his peace. En, y te dé y te dé su paz. In Jesus name. En el nombre de Jesús. Amen. 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 God bless you. We love you. Thanks for being with us today. We look forward to seeing you later in the week and next weekend.